Hi everybody. In this video, we want to have a look at approximant sounds. There are four approximant sounds in English. W, Y, R, and L. All four are consonant sounds and all four are voiced sounds. That means we use our vocal cords to produce the sounds. You can always do a little check. Put your hand on your throat. W, Y, R, L. Indeed, there is vibration coming from our vocal cords. They are active. Now, how are they formed? They are formed by bringing our articulators close together. And articulators, that could be, for example, our lips or our tongue. But without producing any turbulent air friction. And this is important to remember because approximants are not the same as plosives or fricatives. With plosives, there is full closure somewhere in the mouth. That is not the case with approximant. There is no full closure. The articulators just come close. However, approximants are also not fricatives because with fricatives, when the articulators come close, we can hear the air friction. That is not the case with approximant. There is no audible air friction that we can hear. The air flows freely through the mouth. So we could say approximants are in between fricatives and vowel sounds. And that is also why they are sometimes called semi-vowels or glides. And remember, I have an extra video dedicated to semi-vowels, in particular, w and y. Make sure you watch it. So, why are they not simply vowel sounds then? Because they behave a lot like vowel sounds and maybe you thought, well, wait a second, they're voiced, the articulators come close, but the air flows freely. Isn't that the same for vowel sounds? Yes, indeed it is, but there is one difference. Approximants are non-syllabic. Again, another technical word. Non-syllabic means that approximants cannot form the call of a syllable. Now, maybe you remember that each syllable in English has to have one vowel sound at its core. Now, approximant sounds, w, y, r, and l, they cannot behave like that. They cannot form the core of a syllable. So that's why they're only semi-vowels. They need another vowel there with them. They cannot really be on their own forming a syllable. That is what non-syllabic means. Let's have a look at each approximant in detail. We'll start with W. How is W formed? Now, you can actually see that when you look at me. W. W. We form W by using both our lips. They come close, but there's no full closure. W. So they come close and then we release them and spread our lips a little bit. W. And the back of our tongue is raised at the velum that is in the back of the mouth. W. And you can see in the diagram, I put two arrows to point to the lips and to the back of the mouth where the velum is. W. And remember, of course, our vocal cords vibrate. W. Let's have a look at a couple of example words. But for those of you who are studying phonology, this might be important. W is also called a voiced bilabial velar approximant. If you're just learning English to speak English, you can forget about that word again. It's quite long and difficult. Now let's have a look at some example words. For example, we have what, would, question, one. The first two words are quite simple. Both times the sound w is represented 
by a W. Looks exactly the same as the sound symbol W. Now the next word, however, question. Here we have the spelling Q U. It's also quite a common spelling pattern. And Q U always forms a K W sound in English. So both of them together. Qu question. And there are many other words starting with Q U in English. And the last word, one, one, two, three, four, five, w, one, here the spelling is an O. It's not as common, but there are some words that are spelled with an O and the O letters represented with a W sound. Let's have a look at our next approximant, Y. Remember another one that was also called a semi-vowel. Now, how is Y formed? Y is formed because the tongue comes close to the roof of the mouth. This sounds a bit funny. You probably never knew that your mouth had a roof. Now, that is simply the top. And it's sort of in the middle of the mouth as well. So, the tongue comes close here to the roof of the mouth, Y. And if you just say it and pay attention to what your tongue does, y, y, yes, it can, I can feel how my tongue is elevated in the middle of my mouth, y. And then, of course, the vocal cords vibrate because this is a voiced sound. And we also call this a voiced palatal approximant. Palatal because that's the place in the mouth where the tongue is elevated. Let's have a look at some example words with the sound y. We have, for example, the words yes and year. Both of those have a y that um, is really represented by the y. And that causes quite a lot of trouble when people start transcribing because they get all muddled up with these two. Um, so y yes and year and there are many words starting with y where the y is a y sound but we also have a few other words few so here we have e w and i've written it down in phonemic transcript so you can see that that is actually a y and an u together here few and then the last word is fuel fuel what we Put in our car to make it move unless it's an electronic car of course fuel and here also we have a y u sound so i'll just say all four words one more time yes year you fuel and if you find that sound difficult make sure you practice a little bit Let's have a look at our next approximant, R. How is R formed? Now, R is formed because the tongue comes close to the alveolar ridge. Now, the alveolar ridge is the little bump just behind your teeth, at the top of your mouth. So, we've got our teeth, and just behind, here we've got, I would call it a little bump, um, it's quite hard, and that is what we call the alveolar ridge. And um, our tongue, for example, touches that part when we say the sounds n. Yeah, the nasal n in no or November makes contact with the alveolar ridge. That is the place that I'm talking about. Now with r, the tongue comes close but it does not touch. And that is very, very important to remember. There's no contact here, unlike the other approximant we're going to talk about next. So it comes close, and R is a little bit difficult for some learners to say. And that is also because the tongue, I would say, curves a little bit in the mouth. R. So it comes close to this ridge, but it is also curved a little bit. I would say almost a bit like a spoon. R. But very important, there is no contact when we form the sound R. And R is also called a voiced 
alveolar approximant alveolar because that's the place where it is formed in the mouth and you can see the arrow pointing to that place in the diagram R. we're going to come back to R later again let's just have a quick look at some words containing R. we have run very simple verb run right wrong so two opposites here right and wrong both start with a r sound and also bring now right run wrong they all start with a r sound although wrong has a silent w at first but in bring it is actually the second consonant so we have b and r together a consonant cluster here bring br br so practice that a little bit yeah run right wrong bring b, r, bring very good i can't hear you but i'm sure you sound fantastic let's have a look at the last approximant now that is l. L, i think is quite an interesting sound because of the way it's formed um, so let's have a look at it in more detail so if you want to form the sound l, your tongue needs to touch the alveolar ridge so l, the difference here is that there is contact that's very different to r, but also the air flows on the side of the tongue okay so it's released uh, past the sides of the tongue L. and that is different because i told you before that um, when we form the nasal N, we also have contact in the same place but the difference here was that N, the air actually flows out through the nose which is why it's called a nasal but here that is different. The air flows out on the side because it's only the tip of the tongue that touches behind your teeth. Yeah, so it's only the tip of the tongue on the alveolar ridge and the air flows out on the side. And in comparison, r, there was a bit of movement also with r that we just had before and there was no contact, but here clear contact the tip of the tongue has clear contact with the alveolar ridge let's have a look at some example words um oh and the special word of course what do we call l? it's a voiced lateral approximant sometimes people just call it a lateral it's a bit shorter and easier but here are some example words for example long left all rolling so the first two words have l at the start long left and i would suggest you practice those first if you find l difficult or you can't really hear the difference between l and r so long left you can also exaggerate a bit and say it louder and longer long left and really make sure there's proper contact here and then we put it at the end of the word tall tall l. so here the l is at the end is a bit shorter maybe and then in between rolling 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 that makes me think of a song here <laughs> rolling so l in the middle make sure that tongue goes all the way to the front and touches behind your teeth if it does not touch it will sound like r and it's roaring mm -mm, that's not the right word rolling rolling mm -mm. it's a bit of uh, movement here for the tongue you have to become a bit faster and maybe the tongue this is a new movement for your tongue um, but i promise with enough practice it will become easier so let's have a look again at the difference between r and l because i know this is quite difficult for some english learners so remember 
R, no contact. It sounds a little bit more like w, r, w. They're not the same. For me, they sound very different, but they are more similar than r and l. These are very distinct and different sounds in English. So l, the tongue touches just behind your teeth and there is clear contact. Now, let's have a look at some words where r and l makes all the difference. I'm talking about minimal pairs. Now remember, Minimal pairs are pairs of words that sound exactly the same apart from one sound in the same position and that one sound is different and that difference makes all the difference because the meaning changes. Of course the pronunciation changes and with it the meaning. So there are quite a lot of words um, with l and r where l and r is the only difference so they form minimal Pairs. Let's have a look at some. So I've written this down again for you. L. Remember the first column, all these words have a L and there's contact. And then R, contactless. No, no touching of the tip of the tongue here. So I will say them out loud and I want you to listen carefully and then repeat them after me. I will always start with the first column first. Alive. Arrive, light, right, long, wrong, collect, correct, fly, rye. Play, pray, lead, read. Very good. If this was difficult for you to even hear the difference or to say, I would say stop the video, go back and repeat it one more time before we do our little test. Let's do a little test. Which word do I say? So I'm only going to say one word for each pair and you need to decide if it's the one with L or the one with R. Listen carefully. Alive. Alive. Light. Light, wrong, wrong, collect, collect, fry, fry, pray, pray. Lead, lead. Let's have a look at the answers. And here they are. I said alive, light, wrong, collect, fry, pray, and lead. Leave me a little comment. Let me know how you got on. I hope this has been helpful and you've learned more about approximant and especially the difference between L and R.